Hello there. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, I like giant robots. It's just something about a hundred foot tall metal man that you control that really brings out the kid in me. Which brings me to today's subject, actually. Pat Labor the movie. Created by Mamoru Oshii's Headgear Project, Pat Labor the movie followed a 22 volume manga and a 7 episode OVA in the late 80s. Picked up for release by Manga Entertainment in 1995, this film follows the exploits of the police labor division as they try to solve a case of industrial sabotage. So let's power up and log into Pat Labor Mobile Police, the movie. Shinobu Nagumo is chief of Section 1 of the Tokyo Mobile Police. She's been checking out the new series of labels that are being built. Two members of the second section have just landed and are on their way to see you. Boy, what a sight! Wasn't it worth it making the trip here to see the best labor in the world? Oh, well I suppose so, but couldn't they have made it look friendlier? What? Apparently, there have been some bugs in the system. You know the New York Police Department took delivery of three zero types some months ago on a trial basis and it seems they had certain teething troubles. But after a tussle with the section head... And in any case, in my opinion, second section isn't competent to protect the city by itself. The well-meaning misfits of section two were left on duty. The reason you joined the force to begin with is to protect the place, so that's exactly what we'll do till the captain has given us the green light and sends us on leave. Sergeant Ota, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, the fun we'll have with him. <laughs> They managed to shut down the rogue label, but not without a touch of collateral damage. Chill out, Ota. After a long night's research, young officer Shinohara discovers a troubling link between the new Hyper OS and incidents of rampaging labels. I cross-reference repair reports that various mechanics had submitted on labors they'd worked on. Just one factor was common to every case that came up. But the HOS is now installed in over 80% of all the labors currently in operation. And then, Captain Goto, Chief of Section 2, proposes an even more troubling theory. The only possible explanation then would be that the tendency for labors equipped with the HOS to malfunction has been deliberately programmed into the system afterwards. Personnel profile on Mr. Oichi Hoba. Hoba? Hoba designed the program for the hypersystem just about alone. Wouldn't it be simpler to find him and question him? Yes, it would. What does that mean? Why don't we? He's dead. A gang of steel workers were present and they gave us an eyewitness account. He jumped off the ark. Seems that his body wasn't found. Chief Engineer Sakaki investigates Shinohara Heavy Industry, the makers of the HOS. Is it safe? Tell me straight, is it safe to operate? Meanwhile, Shinohara, and yes, they are related, delves into the HOS in search of answers. Ichihoba. Ihoba. That's what you get for using Windows 95. Meanwhile, there's a subplot of Detective Motsui and his partner searching Eichihoba's old addresses in the rundown slums of Tokyo.
Look at that skyline. Huh? Oh, yeah. Just as we saw from Hoba's other apartments as well. I just can't begin to see what this Hoba's all about. A labor programmer at his level has to pull in a fairly decent salary. It takes a lot of clever maneuvering to cover your tracks in a place like Tokyo. Now, there is a lot more to that subplot, but I'm willing to bet you've got a very short attention. Look at Bunny! Well, now that we've got that unfortunate business out of the way, let's move on. Shinohara and Captain Goto assess the data on labor rampage incidents. The disposition of laborers around Tokyo is pretty even and pretty widespread, but the destructive rampages have all been confined to those three circles on display. Which means that there's some force in those three particular pockets that somehow activates them. You haven't had any sleep for 48 hours, Azuma. Go get some rest. Shinohara grabs Noah Izumi, fellow labor pilot, and designated female of the movie, and whisks her off for some eats. Hey, listen! Have you told anybody that you've taken me out to eat? Captain Goto told me I was to have a shower and find some air. I took the shower and we're out for the air now. Tell me now. What? Have you been having trouble with Alphonse recently? Listen, Alphonse will do what I tell him. He... he won't run amok, I promise. He won't go on the rampage like the others. Pull yourself together, dear. But a chance discovery while they're out. You know, dogs can hear all sorts of things that human ears can't pick up at all. Maybe the wind's making some sort of noise like that. <sighs> that might be it. Leads Shinohara to strand Izumi. I hate you! You can't just leave me! How will I get back? And rush off to follow a hunch. These towers make whistling sounds when the wind is from the northwest at a particular speed. We know it happens, even if human hearing can't pick it up. But a labor might pick them up with its sensor system. I think that sound might be the trigger which makes labors run amok. Returning the next morning, Shinohara is promptly suspended on active duty. Hey, there's no need for you to look depressed. You've done well. Pinning the trouble down to the hyper system took a lot of brains. It's a fine piece of detective work. But shock! As software geek Shige returns from assignment in the States, the truth is finally revealed. I never installed the hyper system in the first place. What? But HQ ordered you to! Yeah, but somehow I had a few doubts about this wonderful new hyper system, so I re-equipped with dummy disks and dumped the real ones. How come that nobody ever told you? After all, Goto knew. Captain Goto, ladies and gentlemen. They don't call him Razor Sharp Goto for nothing. And as the sun sets, Captain Goto spends a moment philosophizing with Detective Matsui. Good question. I don't think I can help you. And then retires hey, to his office to consider the case. And Jehovah came down and saw the tower the people had built in the city. And he created many languages so that one man could not understand another. And God threw man back to the ground. The next morning, Shinohara and Shige are reviewing the data at their apartment. Here we go. Hey, yep. Are we sure that the parameters are sufficient? That's it. That's what we could have here. Sympathetic vibrations that reinforce and amplify one another. There! But oh dear, a typhoon's been forecast. The typhoon is of exceptional force. Current estimates have put the likely wind speeds at an unprecedented 40 meters per second. The decision is reached to destroy the labor factory. Pleasure or business? Business. What's your occupation? Labor pilot. And so the lovable misfits of the second division set off to their task. The idea is to get to the control room and that's all. Oda, up front. Let's keep a nice tight formation. Okay, let's go! Charge! Watch out! Guard robot! X-Guard robot now!
After tussling with the guard robots, the strike team reached the control room. Okay, let's see. All units, do you read? Security system deactivated. Roger. Listen. Huh? Hey, there's somebody up in the top floor sub control. There can't be anyone. Izumi must make the dangerous journey to the top floor alone to investigate Hoba's life signs. Computer ID reads Aichi Hoba. What? Noah, check it out. Why me, though? It's too dangerous outside of labor, and we need someone with good judgment. I'll back you from here. <sighs> Every computer memory that's come into contact with a hyper system associated program is also infected. That means it goes on spreading. They'll be relying on the ARC computer. That surely had contact with the HO system. Uh... But oh dear, the labors are starting up. And Kanaka has a plan. She said she needed to find a weapon and left us here. Kanaka, don't do it. The Type Zero is too dangerous. Its protective system may have rejected the virus. I realize it's a gamble, but we've got to take the risk. Izumi finally reaches the top level and finds no sign of Hoba. Only birds. Lots of birds. We need to know if there's anybody there. No! At least nothing human! There's nothing human here! Huh? But then the inevitable happens. Luckily, they find a manual backup. Purging! And so the factory is destroyed. But as the sun rises, where's the S RAM? Back of the neck, the same as the ninety eight. And so our movie ends with Captains Goto and Nagamo appearing via helicopter. <laughs> so that was Pat Labor. But, much as I love giant robot action, I can't put this one into the House of Love. Or at least not the English dub. This English dub is atrocious. Lines are changed, the swears are gratuitous, it's got all the hallmarks of Mangle Entertainment's first wave of titles doesn't even credit the Japanese voice actors. But it wouldn't be on here if it wasn't a good movie, and sure enough, the Japanese original track makes up for it. All in all then, this is a slow-burning, thoughtful piece with a rip-roaring climax, and that makes for an enduring classic in my book. So thanks for watching, and be sure to join me next time for more fun and frolics. So long, folks!